February 17, 2010, um, he was complaining of a headache. And it was the 4th of July weekend, and I remember it like it was yesterday. She had me um, come in and took my blood pressure. And at that point, everything just kind of went into high gear. And I stopped by the office, and they just looked at me, and they said, you need to go to Kapiolani Hospital ER right now. The twins, I think, had some especially difficult challenges early on. They were born about seven weeks early, almost two months premature. We were having a very challenging time here on Hawaii Island. Um, our OBGYNs had gone on strike. I was um, in Honolulu, and uh, I had stopped in to just drop off some paperwork at my OBGYN. I remember his nurse came to the doorway and she looked at me and she said, come inside. I said, oh, I don't have an appointment. No, come inside. They uh, discovered I was, um, my blood pressure was quite high. It was preeclamptic. And uh, so they immediately um, recommended that I check into Kapi'olani Women and Children's Hospital. Toxemia is something that could, if you don't take care of it, if the babies don't come out, it could be fatal for the babies and the mother. I was already going into preterm labor, and they decided at that point, after a week's time, to, to allow me to deliver. They were both breathing on their own, but um, within a very short period of time, they realized that um, there was a, a distension in the abdomen of our firstborn. Kind of noticed that there was a little lump in, in one of the twins on the belly part, and I asked about that. I said, is this something normal? Because the other twin doesn't have that. And I guess they had to do an exploratory surgery, or that's what was recommended. They were in NICU. Um, and the intermediary um, intensive care for about two months at the hospital. So they actually were discharged close to their due date. We are so grateful for the care that they received there from the very beginning. If Anna didn't you know, go there and she, was, she couldn't make it from here to there, I, I just don't know if it may have all worked out as well as it did. They're big boys now, you know, they, from what started as, what, almost two and a half pounds, and they both work on the ranch. They love the outdoors. They go diving and fishing. They're up in the mountains hunting, hiking. If you were to look in the dictionary for the word coincidence, it does not exist in the Hawaiian language. So things happened as they needed to happen, and we really feel so blessed and fortunate that we were on Oahu for the birth of our twins. Life can turn so quickly. Getting to school on that day, that's all I remember. He's always been a happy boy, um, well liked by his teachers, his friends. I like to do basketball, volleyball, and I like to watch baseball. Uh, he normally doesn't get headaches, and uh, this time was, was different. It was to the point where he was uh, screaming um, because of the, the pain was pretty intense. He had a sudden onset of blood in his head rendering him unconscious. He required help with his breathing. He required a tube to help drain that blood until the swelling could go down and he could wake up. Um, that, in his case, took several weeks. You know, we look for things to grab onto, but initially it was a wait and see. In Cody's case, trying to do surgery is often not the best approach because you'll end up causing more damage. Uh, they did a gamma knife radiosurgery 
It involves 301 separate gamma rays to hit one spot and then it will kill the AVM. Um, hopefully. And, and as the days went along and he started to come out of sedation and he went through um, therapy, he had to learn to drink water, to, to learn to walk, to learn to sit up. When I first met Cody, he was in the PICU, Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. He was at a point where he was just agitated all the time, just kicking in bed and yelling. He was barely talking, and when he did, it just didn't make any sense. The first things we were learning how to do was just move around in bed, try to sit up as much as he can. That was therapy for the first couple of days, even couple of weeks. He then had to learn how to stand up without falling over. He had to learn how to walk all over again. We used special devices like walking sticks. He eventually progressed to running, jumping, running upstairs. It's hard. We go running around a lot. He was able to walk out of the doors. And actually, was, if he wanted to, he could even run out of the doors. Everything was, was going well for us. Um, he went back to school after his first episode. And, and then on Christmas Eve, he had a, a second bleed. Fortunately, the second time Cody came in, uh, it wasn't nearly as severe of a bleed. It was uh, much smaller. Uh, there was not nearly as much swelling. He didn't require all those intensive interventions that he did the first time. So we're back doing therapy again, and uh, periodically we come here uh, to just try to keep going forward and, and keep getting better. Cody is a wonderful child, and from what I understand, he's He's back to the real Cody Sugai. Cody's doing well. Um, he's, a, he's a strong boy. Yeah, physically, um, some weakness in his left side, but, but emotionally, um, he's, he's strong. There are good days and bad days, like, like we all have. But, you know, for us, if we could only be as strong as he is, um, I think we'd be pretty satisfied with ourselves. I do want to thank the hospital and the medical facility. From the time we got here, uh, you know, we're, we're under such care, such uh, warmth, and genuine uh, individual uh, care for, for us. So thank you very much, and God bless you all. I did it. I fought through the disease. The pregnancy was uneventful, for the most part, until around my sixth month, I started to get some headaches, and I started to swell. And I stopped by the office, and they just looked at me, and they said, you need to go to Kapiolani Hospital ER right now. So, of course, I get there, and everything was, had gone awry. And they were quickly trying to find her heartbeat, and they kept paging Dr. Wall, Dr. Naomi Wall, please come to ER. And you could hear them, the, the, the excitement in the room, and. She came in, and 30 seconds in, she goes, there she is. And I just remember weeping without a sound, and just tears coming down my eyes and thinking, thank you, God. I had no idea what I was in for. Yeah, everybody was very somber because the decision had to be made. If they don't take baby, they'll lose me. And the next thing you know, I, it was an emergency C-section. And they said, I don't think you've ever seen what a child under four pounds looks like. And they said, this baby is going to be well under two pounds. Kiolama was born at 27 weeks gestation. There was a real possibility that she may not make it. People kept coming in and saying they were sorry. I remember thinking, what are you sorry for? I am a new mother. You should be congratulating me. And then people were thinking, oh, you are in denial, girl. And I was thinking, no, I have, am in faith is what I am in. I am in faith of this place. She was tiny, tiny, tiny. 
but she was perfect, absolutely divine. By the grace of God and, and this team and the NICU and the doctors and everybody at Kapilani Hospital, she um, was relatively unscathed. Yeah, at that time, Dr. Balaraman likes to tell the story about, you know, he was uh, her very first patient. And he likes to say, gosh, Luana, um, if I had told you that, you probably would have asked for another doctor. I said, absolutely. But what a blessing we didn't, because he's become a dear friend. And we've kept in touch with him all these years. I had a really interesting start. And I think a lot of my dreams to become a physician stem from having, you know, a, a tricky beginning and having wonderful people take care of me. And I, I had the luxury and the great fortune and the experience to spend my summer here this last summer in the NICU. So I got to work with Dr. Balaraman this summer and I just, I love, I love him. And he makes me want to be, he makes me want to be like him. It is um, really amazing to see what Kilama's aspirations are. I would have never imagined that this uh, tiny little baby who sat in the incubator for so many weeks on end has um, such profound ideas and personality to try to drive her future to soaring heights. Wow, I can't believe I'm working alongside people that took care of me, but they're ready to work through the tough moments and the hard moments and the emotional moments because they're doing great things. They're doing really valuable work and they are investing in people like me.